Another component of, or another aspect of calorie expenditure is after you exercise, okay? And we call this excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, or EPOC. So basically, this is just your body's way to return itself to its normal state, rest, but it takes energy to do that, okay? So what happens after you exercise, your body has to replenish its fuel stores, because you use a lot of those nutrients. It has to repair the cells that it damaged, and then it also goes through a process where it converts fat stores into free fatty acids and then back to fat stores. All you really need to know is that all this requires energy and calorie consumption, okay? So calorie consumption is greatest right after your exercise bout. As time passes, it decreases, it decreases, it decreases because your body gets more stable. But this can last up to 36 hours after, your, after you exercise. So people talk about exercise raising your metabolism. Kinda, but this is what they're talking about. You burn more calories after you exercise. So it's, it's an average of about the, the, this epoch effect that we'll call it lasts about 10 hours after high intensity bouts of exercise. And it lasts roughly three hours after low intensity bouts of exercise. So increases in exercise intensity correlate with the effect with this epoch effect. So in a nutshell, what this means, you will burn more post-exercise calories after high intensity exercise than you will after low intensity exercise. And it's not a great amount. It's not 500 more calories. It might be 10, it might be 20, it might be 50. But when you're talking about two, three times a week for the rest of your life, that can really start to add up, okay? Secondly, another thing to kind of take from that, and this isn't necessarily just with high intensity exercise. This is just with exercise in general. The more days a week you exercise, the more you're going to benefit from the effects of this excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, okay? Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, interval training does also improve your VO2 max. So, VO2 max is basically your body's ability to take in oxygen, transport oxygen to those muscles, and then those muscles' ability to use that oxygen for energy. Because remember, we talked about when you're in that aerobic metabolism, those muscles use oxygen to convert fat and carbohydrates into energy. Well, that's all wrapped up in this VO2 max. Your ability to take in oxygen, transport oxygen to the muscles, and then your, your muscles' ability to use that oxygen for energy. This is, again, the single best measure of cardiovascular fitness. And out of duration mode, and frequency and intensity, intensity has the greatest effect on your VO2 max, okay? And it's been shown that high intensity bouts of exercise improve your VO2 max more than lower bouts of exercise. The reason for this is because you put, again, you, you stress aspects of your body, <coughs> muscles, your heart, more so than you do at lower levels. So your body adapts to the exercise, and then you push it a little further. The optimal intensity for improvement is about 80 to 90 percent. I've got HRR there, and that stands for heart rate reserve. And when I say 80 to 90 percent heart rate reserve, that's basically saying 80 to 90 percent of your maximal effort, okay? We'll go through a formula on how to calculate your, your heart rate reserve. And it's a lot more, it's a little more extensive than just using your age. It takes your heart rate and other fitness factors into consideration. So it's a little more specific to your own fitness level. Higher intensities might be needed for highly higher trained athletes. ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine, they're kind of the gold standard when it comes for exercise science and exercise prescription. <coughs> Just speaking on VO2 max, they say that you need to do at least 40 to 59 percent of your HRR to see minimal minimal improvements 
in your VO2 max or the efficiency and strength of your heart. But they recommend that you do a combination of what they consider vigorous, which is greater than 60% of your HRR, a combination of moderate to vigorous exercise to, to maximize your benefits to improve your cardiovascular strength. Okay, so, so they're saying that if you go at higher intensities as well, you're going to improve your VO2 max a little more than just lower intensities. So let's talk a little bit about who should interval, interval train. ACSM recommends that anybody getting into exercise starts off with about four to six weeks of just increasing your duration. So not even worrying about intensities. So you start off 20 minutes on the treadmill, spend a couple weeks there in that zone, the next week move up to maybe 25 minutes. Increase your durations before you do anything. They also recommend to take about four to eight months to get up to the recommended uh, exercise, um, the exercise recommendations um, for your specific age group and gender. So basically what they're saying is you need to have a pretty good base of, of fitness and exercise before you get into interval training. It's definitely not something that somebody needs to do just starting off on an exercise program. You need to have a pretty strong foundation with your exercise. I would suggest at least two months of, of consistent aerobic exercise before you start any kind of interval training. Um, also, you need to be an apparently healthy individual. So in the packets that you picked up with the slides, they're going to have, and everyone can look at the very back page. This has a pre-participation sc uh, screening questionnaire. And the, there's a top section, there's a bottom section. If you look at all those questions and you answer yes to any of the top questions, I greatly encourage you to talk to your doctor or your physician before you do any kind of high intensity or higher intensity interval training. Okay? If you answer yes to more than one in the bottom section, same thing. I definitely encourage you to talk to your doctor or your physician before you do any kind of interval training. Okay? Because what this does, if you have any kind of um, you know, cardiovascular disease, um, if you have um, you know, COPD, um, arthritis, any of these things, then um, high intensity interval training can be unsafe. It, it, can, it can actually have negative effects on your health and your exercise. So definitely um, you know, take, this, take that questionnaire very seriously and, and definitely talk to your physician and ask them if this is something that's going to be safe for you before you get into the, to the interval training. Okay, so let's talk about the components <coughs> of an interval training program. You've got duration of intervals, so the amount of time you actually spend in that high intensity zone. You've got the duration of rest, so how much time you spend at the lower intensities at rest. You've got the number of interval repetitions, so how many times do you need to repeat that interval? Uh, you've got the intensity of the intervals. So how hard do you need to go? Um, how should your body feel when you're going this hard? Where should your heart rate be? Um, and then frequency. How many days a week do you need to do the interval uh, training? So I've got interval, in, interval duration and interval intensity both on the same, same slide here. And that's because they're basically dependent on one another. So the shorter your intervals are, meaning the shorter the duration, the higher the intensity your interval should be. So let's say you do an interval for 30 seconds. You're going to go at a pretty high intensity because it's only 30 seconds and you know you're going to have some rest time when that 30 seconds ends. If I tell you to do an interval for five minutes, you don't need to go at that same intensity. You won't last five minutes. You shouldn't last five minutes at the same intensity you do a 30 second interval at. So, does everyone see how the, re the relationship between the intensity of your interval versus the, the uh, duration of your interval? So, what, um, what we recommend as far as 
how far you should do these intervals at, and this is, again, for apparently healthy individuals wanting to do high-intensity interval training, 85% of your HRR up to a maximal effort, which might be a 30-second interval. You might get to the point where you're going as hard as you possibly can. One thing to be careful about when you're using heart rate to gauge how hard you're doing your intervals at is it takes your heart about two to three minutes to match the intensity that your body's going. So, for example, when you get on a treadmill and if you get your, do your warm up and your heart rate's at about 100 and then you, it's time for you to get into your exercise and you take the treadmill speed up and you take the incline speed up, when you get to that point, it's gonna take your heart about two to three minutes to catch up. And then once it does, it'll just kind of level off, okay? So once you get up to that two to three minute point and you stay at that same intensity, your heart rate will stay basically the same if you continue that, if you continue that intensity. So let's say I tell you to do a 30 second interval. You might go as far as you possibly can and your heart rate might not get up above 100 in those 30 seconds. So you'll never get up to 85 to 100 percent in the first couple intervals. That's why I encourage you to use more of perceived exertion, how you feel, okay? Uh, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. What I do want to cover, and this is important just for, just for determining your, your target heart rate for any type of exercise, okay? Most of us know about the age predicted formula where you take 220 minus your, minus your age and multiply that by a certain percentage to exercise that. That's a good kind of general guideline, but there's a lot of margin and error with, it, with that. So for example, let's say I have two 40 year olds that come up to me and they ask me where their heart rate should be when they exercise. One, one has a resting heart rate of 60 and the other has a resting heart rate of 100, but they're both 40 years old. If I use that old age predicted formula, I'm going to tell them to be exercising at the same exact intensity, let's say it's 120 to 150, when the person that's at 100, he might be at 120 by the time he gets to the treadmill, but the person at 60 is going to have to work a lot harder to get up there. So this formula here takes into account your resting heart rate. Your resting heart rate is a pretty good gauge of your fitness level because the stronger your heart is, the more blood it can pump out per beat, the less it has to beat per minute to get the rest of your body the adequate amount of blood and oxygen it needs. That's why you typically see these very fit endurance athletes with very low heart rates. There's been cyclists that have had resting heart rates in the 20s. Um, Lance Armstrong's lowest was 32. So that's how strong your heart can get when an apparently healthy individual has a resting heart rate of about 60 to 80. That's a good healthy heart rate. So, when determining your exercise heart rate, what you would do is you would still take 220 minus your age to get your max heart rate, and then you would take your max heart rate, that number you got up top, minus your resting heart rate. Multiply that by the percentage you should be at. So let's say I say you need to exercise between 60 and 80 percent. You would do that, multiply it by 0.6, which would be 60 percent, and add your resting heart rate back into that. So the below example, if I tell Tim that he needs to exercise between 80 and 85 percent in his interval training, what he could do is take, again, 220 minus his age, he's 35, he has a resting heart rate of 70. 220 minus 35, he gets 185 beats per minute for his max heart rate. Multiplies that by, or subtracts his resting heart rate, which is 70, multiplies that times 85%, adds his resting heart rate back in. Same thing, multiplies it by 95%, adds his resting heart rate back in. So he gets 167 to 179 beats is what I'm telling him to do his intervals at. So that's a, a more specific heart rate to use. So you can use this for any type of, any type of exercise, not just high intensity interval training. The next way to kind of gauge your intensity will be with perceived exertion. So Borg scale, rating of perceived exertion, 
go 6 to 20. I know this is very subjective, um, but it works. We all know our own bodies. We know if we're doing a little too much, we know if we can do a little more, we know if we can push ourselves a little more. So six would be basically what you guys are doing now, just sitting at rest, sleeping. Nine is very light. Eleven is fairly light. Thirteen somewhat hard. Most of y'all's exercise probably sticks between eleven and thirteen somewhere. Okay? Fifteen would be hard. Seventeen very hard. Twenty would be about a maximal effort. Okay? So if you go back to that slide that talks about interval intensity and duration, we want you on those intervals to be 15 to 20, hard to, to maximal effort. And again, just remember, these are intervals of 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes in duration. You know, I'm not telling you to go 85% for 30 straight minutes. You're going to get a rest period in between, okay? Okay, the number of intervals. So these are dependent on the duration of your intervals. So again, if I tell you to do a 30 second interval and repeat that 10 times, if I tell you to do a five minute interval, I'm not gonna tell you to repeat that 10 times. That might be three times, okay? So again, you see the relationship between duration and um, uh, the number of, of total intervals. Um, they're also dependent on your fitness level. A beginner just getting into interval training uh, I'm not going to recommend that you do a three minute interval or you do a five minute interval, okay? You just won't be able to last at those higher intensities for that long a period of time. So five to 15 minutes, and this is just kind of a general guideline here, five to 15 minutes of your total workout, your total work bout, uh, should be in that interval training zone. So your higher intensity intervals should last a total of about five to 15 minutes, okay? and beginners should start with a lower number of repetitions. So we'll, I'll, I'll break down a couple exa examples of interval programs and we'll see how they kind of progress over time. Okay, the duration of your rest. How long do you need to take in between your high intensity interval? Okay, this is dependent on your fitness level. So individuals that have a higher fitness level can recover a lot quicker. So we see this all the time when we do our VO2 max test. We'll get somebody's heart rate up to about 85% of their maximal effort. When they reach that or when the test is over, we'll take the treadmill down and we'll let them cool down for a couple minutes. We'll see people's heart rate drops very quickly. Others, it takes a lot longer for their heart rate to drop, which is a, a, a pretty good indication that they're not as fit as the other individual where their heart rate adapted and came down a lot quicker. So. Fitter individuals recover a lot quicker. They don't have to take as long between intervals. So, we do recommend that you have about a three to one rest to interval ratio for beginners. So, for example, if you have a 30 second interval, we recommend you rest about 90 seconds, okay? We wanna work up to where we're close to a one to one ratio. So, 30 second for your interval, 30 seconds of rest. Now. The, the, the issue with, with saying that is, if I tell you to do a five minute interval, if you're a beginner or if you're an advanced individual, five minutes of rest is gonna be probably plenty for even a beginner mm -hmm. to recover and then do another five minute interval. So it does have a little play the longer your intervals are. It's probably not going to be necessarily a three to, one, three to one ratio. If you have a two minute interval, you're probably not going to need to rest for six minutes. Okay? Four minutes will probably be adequate for a beginner. And your rest period should be at an RPE close to about 11. So, again, on that scale, 11 was light exercise. You definitely don't want to just stop or stand still. You know, you go hard for 30, 30 seconds or for a minute, don't get off the treadmill and just kind of stand around and make sure, you know, everyone else is watching you do your, your hard training. You definitely want to keep moving, okay? When you just stop and you just stand there, your blood pressure drops, your heart rate drops too quickly. Start seeing stars, you might end up passing out. 